Hey, Freight Waves fans and friends, welcome to Freight Waves Now, the Wednesday edition where everything is happening all at the very same time. So, uh, and you know, it's great to have you on here. We have got resident market expert, uh, Dean Croak, our data uh, insights uh, expert, if I can get that right. He's our chief insights analyst, yes. And of course, Nick Austin, our chief meteorologist, bringing it to us with all the kinds of cool new features that we have uh, with our weather in indexes here. So tell us what is happening today, Nick. Hello. Hey, Chad. More snow out in the Sierra. The good news is the snow will be kind of lightening up a bit later today. It's going to start fading. There's been a lot of snow in the Sierra, not just the last couple of days, but all season. There are some ski resort owners out in the Sierra Nevada that have said they've had record February snowfall. So, I mean, we're talking about you I know, feel two, like 200 plus inches for the season so far. I feel like we need to play Led Zeppelin. The song remains the same. I yeah, mean, that'd be perfect. The Sierras Very. are the story becoming the, the story, story of the year. Um, they had a pretty big winter a couple of years ago, too. But last year was very, very quiet. But it's causing a lot of travel problems. I-80 uh, from the Nevada state line to Baxter, California. There's, that's about a 60 mile stretch. And it's been closed. For how long? So, uh, just like a day. For quite or? a while. Wow. It, it closed, I think, at some point last night, and it still might be closed now. If not, then they've reopened it very recently. But, um, but as you can see, this new feature. Yes. The, this is looking at a future row condition map here that we have now available on Sonar. And if you see that through time, that off and on right here along I-80. Yeah, it's kind of glowing. It turns purple in some yeah. areas, and some of the other routes too, like US 50 and some other routes that uh, go through the Sierra. That means those are possible road closures that, are hap that may happen in the future. Um, Just another reason to stay out of California that's if you right. can. Now right? that storm's gonna kind of wind down tonight, but the roads are still gonna be pretty bad for a while. And if we zoom out and look at the rest of the country, there's not really a whole lot more going on as far as any uh, you know major snow, except for the Northern Rockies. So. Okay. From Boise up to around Butte, Montana, and across West Yellowstone, there may be some trouble on the roads there as well. There, there was trouble yesterday, too, yeah. with some road closures. And, uh, but the rest of the country is relatively quiet, so that's the good news. What's the red and the blue mean again that we're kind of seeing a little bit? Uh, well, the, bl the blue means wet roads. Wet, just wet. Well, yeah. Just wet. And the red, wet. red, is that... That's not freezing rain, is the, it? The red is, uh, I believe, means kind of slushy. Okay. Um, if we pull the map up a little bit, it should we show. Or it. I think we can add the legend on there. But um, the reds generally mean snowy. There it is. Yep. Right? Slush. Slush, snowy. Snow. So we've got some of that in the, the northeast. The pink is icy. And then the purple that we saw out in California yes, is showing closures. possible road closures. Right. Okay. So the blue and the green, those are the friendly colors on this map because... The green is dry and the wet, you know, the blue is just wet and rainy. You can get through that. And, yeah. you know, truckers can get through that. Um, except they have had some flooding out in California. But snow has been causing way more problems than the rain. And it's been really windy out there, too. But all that's going to kind of calm down tonight. So okay. That's, that's the good news. Thank and you. And then we'll have more weather news coming up for the end of the week. I oh. mean, there's... Oh. Yeah. There oh. could, there could sounds be... sounds like a tease. Could be some icy weather uh, in parts of the Northeast towards the end of the work week, but that's not happening today. So we'll worry about that later. Okay, that's <laughs> right, because this is all about what is happening right now. And that is what is happening for you. The song remains the same in the Sierras. Just stay out of California if you at all can. And you know, a little bit of fuzziness up there in the uh, Northeast um, and just kind of wet in the Southeast. Um, such as it is. So thank you so much, Nick Austin. And now Chief Insight uh, Officer uh, Dean Croak, bring it to hey, us. Chad. Hi, welcome back, so, back to back. Yeah, thank you. So uh, on top of our flatbed um, session yesterday and the, the nasty weather out west, today we want to talk about the beautiful weather in Florida and what that means for the spring produce season that started. Because just this week, we've seen freight volumes start to pick up. So two days in a row, freight volumes are up, are up about 3%. So this is the first time 
since early January that freight volumes have shown any sign of a spring thaw. Oh, like as in they're trending, trending up. up, which okay. means shippers are shipping more volume. And actually, one one of the um, things that I thought was really interesting yesterday that you talked about, Dean, was uh, you were talking about skateboards and how what does that have to do with uh, you know with trucks? Well, it right. has to be it, it happens to be flatbeds. And right. today, I think it's funny. Uh, today is about shiny heinies. Right. What right. is a shiny heinie? Right. Well, just like a flatbed is a really good barometer for the general economy because it speaks to the construction industry. Yeah. A shiny hiney, as you can see here, <laughs> oh, is, the, there it is. is the rear end of a produce hauler. And these are heavily insulated rear doors. They have this quilted look to them. Um, in the trucking world, they're called shiny hineys, as in shiny rear ends. And, and you can always tell a produce hauler, but you can't tell them much. And, uh, but, <laughs> but, but these guys, are, this is a specialist group of carriers. You'll know their trucks because they are long hooded 379 Peterbilt, W900 Kenworths, long wheelbase, spread axle refrigerated trailers, like we talked about spread axle trailers yesterday for weight distribution. With produce, these are specialist guys where there's one trailer, one truck. Unlike dry van over the road where there's typically three to four trailers to a powered unit, right. these trailers typically stay on their truck. A lot of owner operators are specialist produce haulers, haul a lot of spot market freight. So a lot of these yeah. guys are running back and forth on the 95 between Baltimore, Philadelphia, Chicago and Miami. Uh, it's pretty much a backhaul market at the moment. There hasn't been a lot of volume, but there's some good news on the horizon. I want to talk a little bit about and I what's do going on. <clears throat> that yeah. you, uh, 19% of the total uh, over-the-road market? Yeah. Uh, I'll call that, yeah. Uh, um, a good bit more than flatbed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, um, because this time of the year, you need refrigerated carriers to keep freight warm so it doesn't freeze. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of so refrigerated carriers have a multi-purpose to yes. keep things cool in summer, but to keep things warm in winter. It's a kind of a little bit counterintuitive. Right. So, a lot of people think that it's just to keep things cold, but sometimes it's to keep yeah. them from. So a lot know, of beer, for example, some yeah. of the big uh, brewery companies couldn't ship beer because they couldn't get enough refrigerated trailers to stop it from freezing and the cans and bottles splitting open. So today we want to talk a little bit about the produce industry and delve yeah. a little bit into the Florida spring produce season and the and the big um, strawberry festival that's happening tomorrow. It's a it's a really big event. It's one of the ah. big calendar events in the year. It's a top forty uh, fair that's on. So uh, a little bit of, on the background leading into that. The if you look at the last year tender rejection. So this is a the blue is the refrigerated tender reject index. So this is the percentage okay. of the percentage of loads that refrigerated carriers reject in the market. So you can see that it's been trending down over time. It sure has. You can see some, you know, summer. You can see summer. There's demand for refrigerated trucks. And with 2018, high. of course, the overheated right. the time for about everything. Right. Um, but wow, it's interesting. Even in the September October time, yep. very high still, demand. Still for hot. It. Still yeah. demand. You can see some, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then you head into this time of the year Bam. where you can see if you were to line up the really cold snaps. What you would find is there was a there was an increase in demand for refrigerated trailers in those areas. So okay. generally speaking, the orange line is just all trailers in National, terms of capacity. Yes. Capacity was decreasing as, as fleets had less choice in terms of freight. But refrigeration generally runs quite a few percentage points higher, typically because the trailers are specialized and there's and you need them for refrigerated freight for both summer and keeping freight warm in winter. So that's, the, that's, that's an indication that capacity is increasing. I'm going to build on this and talk a little bit more about what's happening over here. If I overlay the, the same index on a heat map and put in today's temperatures, yeah. what you can see is where it's bitterly cold, yes. that's where the capacity is the, is the tightest. So the heavier the blue, the tighter the capacity for refrigeration trucks. And that's what does seem counterintuitive, right. isn't it? Right. It's the yeah. no freeze freight requirement from shippers where they need refrigerated trailers to keep freight warm. And it kind of maps to where the cold parts of the Midwest are if we want to overlay weather on it. These are the forecasts taken about an hour ago in terms of actual oh, that's temps. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So that, this is a really good heat map for sonar users to get a feel for where freight and capacity is moving. That's how we use that chart. Okay. So, so diving into the Florida produce season, I wanted to give you a, the top 10 states. Florida ranks number four on the list of states. Of, of how much yeah, so, they so, have so produce. So the big dog is California. California produces 33% of the produce nationally, according to the USDA. They're pumping out around 2,173 loads a day. 
So we really want them to keep having their their yeah. uh, precipitation right. that they're having this right. winter. Right. You remember yeah. last week we spoke about the the Oxnard um, straw, uh, salad bowl and, and freight moving to Boston and the oh and yes the rates. yes yes. So that's part of this whole deal here. Okay. Uh, Washington State pears, potatoes, apples. Yes. Twenty six percent. You know potatoes. Pops. Idaho. Yep. Yep. For the beer. Uh, and Florida is pushing out around 650 loads a day. And that's where we want to focus a bit of our attention today. I guess is, I'm a little surprised by that. I thought that yeah. maybe it would be a bigger market. Than well, Florida has suffered a lot in recent years with hurricanes, a couple of hurricanes that oh. decimated the citrus crop. Okay. Uh, they've had some disease problems with citrus. Mm -hmm. And a lot of citrus in Florida is for juicing, not for sort of, you know, the normal consumption we would consider from a supermarket I see. that comes from Florida or Morocco. You'll see a lot of Moroccan and California citrus in your supermarkets today, whereas the juice primarily comes from the Florida crop. And, but I, and I think that not many people would guess that Idaho would be slightly larger even than, all than potatoes, Florida. All potatoes. It's just that potato just, just thing. All potatoes. Just all potatoes. So let's, let's dig <laughs> okay. a little bit into this because yeah. put, putting some numbers around this is important because right now we've got, we've got the, the Lakeland, Lakeland Florida market. So this is the outbound tender volume index, uh, which is the dark blue, and it has jumped 9% in the last few days. So shippers okay. are increasing the volume of freight out of the Lakeland market, which is just to the west of Miami. It's, uh, it's a massive produce producing area. And you can see that with the orange line, which is the refrigerated turn down uh, tender reject index, you can see that the, this is increasing also. So it means that capacity is tightening in that market. As the percentage of rejections increases, the, the capacity is, is tightening in that market. So there's something going on in Lakeland. <laughs> And there it, sure is. It turns out tomorrow. Uh, turns out tomorrow is the um, the strawberry festival that starts. It's been going since 1930. Wow! It's it's ranked in the top 30, uh, top 40 fairs in the country. It, oh. so, it, it sort of takes us back in time to where fairs and um, shows like this were a way for community to get together yeah. and and trade, share commerce ideas, highlight, you know, show their produce all sorts of things like that. Now this little area in Plant City, Florida, which is the heart of Lakeland, okay. uh, there's about um, 10,000 acres of strawberries Wow. on 2,800 farms. And it's, the, the strawberry crop alone is worth about $360 million every year. Well, a couple of quick questions about right. that. Is it, uh, how long does this, does this period of time last? Right. And is it enough to keep Lakeland from being a backhaul market? The answer is uh, temporarily yes. Okay. But, uh, you know, the, the produce season in Florida runs from December to about May. And it kind of spikes in around the March period. And the reason is most produce needs soil temperature of 65 to 70 degrees uh -huh. to germinate. So right now the ambient in Florida is around 75 degrees. Ah, so we're actually in the perfect time for great. produce to be growing and, and being harvested. That's why it's kind of spikes about now in terms of the majority of the crops. So what you'll see is more and more refrigerated freight coming out of Florida. Not so much drier freight or flatbed freight, but yes, there will be more demand for refrigerated trucks as the season starts to ramp up in, in March. Okay. Uh, fascinating. You know, while I'm thinking about it, if I might ask this question, I don't want to take us too off course, but you know, it seems like an enormous advantage to uh, to drive a shiny hiney. You know, like because they're wanted. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, what, can you can you just give me briefly, like, well, why? What are are there pros cons? You know, I mean, there are pros cons about flatbeds. Actually, it sounds to me flatbeds sounds tough. It's hard work. It's yeah. I mean, it's specialized, yeah. so you have yeah. that advantage. But yeah. getting that thing hauling it, it that sounds tough. Right. Well, what what about uh, uh, this refrigerated shiny hiney that uh, is like it seems like t only advantages. Right. What are the disadvantages? Uh, disadvantages: um, a lot of live load, unload, so a lot of dock time Just and on, cold stores. On, so on if you, you look at our okay. if you look at our weight index, Chad, you will see that Fresno, California, has a wait time of 320, what, 28 minutes per visit, and it's because Fresno has a lot of cold stores. So with cold stores where you live load, unload, because yeah. it's one trailer to one truck, typically. You have to spend a lot of time on dock. So the downside is it's a lot of live loading. You don't drop and hook trailers like you would in a truckload driving okay. business, right? So that's okay. the downside. Um, upside, they look great. They are incredibly cool to drive. You they can, look great. Yeah. You know, um, they're but shiny. The, the rates are higher. 
Uh -huh, the right? rates are higher. If you're a specialist produce hauler and you're running produce all the time, you can take advantage of the produce hauler's exemption, which gives you a 150 mile radius between pickup and delivery wow. to run without recording on your hours of service. Right, so you can actually get some advantages there in terms of running between farms. Okay. So there's the ag haulers exemption. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a refrigerated freight kind of gives you a little bit more per mile because when it's hot or cold, you can pick up those the freight volumes like we're seeing here that are spiking in those markets. But if it's not if there's no requirement for fridge van freight, you can just haul dry freight because it just fits oh. in the same trailer. So it's very versatile in that regard. Is it just like maybe a more expensive truck? I'm just yeah. thinking like what would yeah. keep, okay. Much more expensive, a little uh -huh. bit heavier. Uh -huh. um, and they take a fair bit of time to clean because when you add all that bling, you <laughs> have to spend a lot of time shining them. Right. And, and you don't get out of a truck wash under a hundred bucks these days with a, a refrigerated trailer combination. Interesting. Well, yeah. I didn't mean to make you digress too much. Right, right. Um, is, is, do you have anything, do you have other charge uh, no, for other us? Than, I just want yeah. to wrap up with, you know, okay. um, tender volumes are up this week for the first time uh, this year. So there is the spring thaw looks like it's happening. Uh -huh. uh, two days doesn't make a trend, but as we reported in the Daily Watch today, <laughs> Uh, tender volumes are up two days in a row. This is typically when we come out of the sort of the doldrums in terms of freight volumes. Right. Um, if you look back a year ago at this exact time, volumes increased 5% from the start of March to the end of March. So it looks like seasonally we're on track for freight volumes to start to pick up as people start, as the produce season starts to get into full swing and then people start to stock up for spring and summer in terms of mm -hmm. gardening supplies, building supplies, etc. Wow. Well, thank you. Thanks, Dean. Giving us some insights as he is the uh, chief insight uh, officer. Uh, loving it. What, the, how entertaining and fun, interesting, learning about not only the, uh, the fun names that truckers give to their, uh, their respective vehicles, but, uh, but just like what are the advantages and disadvantages, challenges that each and every, you know, segment faces. So um, really interesting about shiny heinies. I bet you'll never think about them the same <laughs> after this episode. Um, and, you know, hey, if you're listening, you're tuning in and you happen to be a carrier driver, even a broker, maybe a shipper, uh, maybe least of all shipper, but like take advantage of the seasonality trends. There are some backhaul markets that right now aren't backhaul. And boy, can you like that you can make it big during this time. So uh, thanks for tuning in to Freight Waves Now, where we're bringing to you what is happening, well, right now, each and every business day, four o'clock, my favorite time of the day. Check us out on Freight Waves Now, of course, and on Twitter and, you know, social media. Share the love. We're on Instagram, too. Uh, you know, anyway, meantime, we will be back to you tomorrow on Thursday. And, you know, uh, in, the, in the meantime, take it easy and don't worry, be happy.